what are genes? Yeah. How, do, how, do, how do they work? What, why, why should we care? So let's start with the genome, right? And yeah, what is so DNA? So we have this thing called DNA. It has four letters, A, C, T, and G. And I kind of think about this as like a recipe book. So you have a recipe book that really much, like pretty much is telling the body how to function. And your genes, the letters of A, C, T, and G, come together in a certain sequence of those would be considered gene, let's say, you know, A, B, C, D, right? Um, or let's say um, black girl magic. So BGM, the BGM gene, right? And it has a sequence of A, T, Cs, and Gs. And that is what makes up the gene. The gene. Now we have 25,000 genes in our entire genome, around 25,000 genes. And so you hear people say like, oh, well, I don't have the gene for that, or you have the gene for that, or we have the gene for that in our family. And it's really interesting how we use that language because in, in actuality, all humans have the 99.9% .9 of the same genome, right? So we all have the same genes. Now what the difference is, is that within that sequence, so going back to the black girl magic gene, within that sequence of the gene, you might have one of those letters that's different between me and you. And so there might be 0.1% that explain the differences. So we're more, like Maya Angelou would say, we're more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. So we are very similar. All people, not all just people. black people. Not, not just, just, yeah. All people, 99.9% .9 of us. Yes. More like, yeah. We so are, all the differences in us just come from that point one percent. That point one percent. That's God, crazy, that and we're nuts. fighting over that. It, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Silly. And it's worth a lot of money. We're furious wait, over oh, that. Oh, wait, back up. She said it's worth a lot of it's money. It's worth a lot how, of money. How so, Janina? Okay, so you know, one of the things I like to educate the community on is that African genomes are the most varied genomes of any human population. And that's a beautiful thing, Why right? Is that? Because we're the first modern day humans. Mm. So modern humans evolved out of Africa. And the first modern day human, we call her mama, mama mitochondria, right? And we can trace like that. Yeah. We can mama trace that. mitochondria. It wasn't white Jesus that birthed? No. <laughs> no? Did I miss be. that? Jesus couldn't birth because he couldn't. Jesus didn't have a, uh, He didn't have ovaries. No Got ovaries. It. How can he birth? Got it. Got it. Mama mitochondria. <laughs> Mama mitochondria. So if you think about it, our genomes, the oldest genomes, have really learned how to survive. We've figured out this human survival thing. So we have, in terms of those little letters and those genes, we have more of those letters than any other human population. Now, why is that worth a lot of money? Well, if you want to create a drug target, if you want to understand how you know people respond to drugs, you want to understand why people develop certain diseases, why you might look one way or another way, it all lies within those changes. So we have the most changes, which means there's a huge you know urgency from a lot of companies to get access to African genomes because we have like the answers essentially. So when we talk about access to our genomes, I, I think of Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. I think of the radiation experiment. I think of the sterilizations. I, th I think of all of the horrific ways in which even even during enslavement, the, the, the gynecologists that would um, experiment on women without anesthesia. I think of all of the things we don't know because it was never chronicled, right? That was done on plantations in secret, right? Um, and what what's the manifestation of this today? And how do, how do we how do we control? our our DNA? How do we control this, the narrative around our DNA? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. So, I mean, the first thing we need to do is understand what the power is, right? Because I think if you understand the power, you might say, hmm, do I, you know, submit my DNA for a genetic ancestry test with the risk that that DNA can be sold to another company with the risk that I might not get any type of benefit from it, that I might not be compensated from it. So uh, 23... That's what happened to Henrietta Lacks. Oh, yeah, well, so Henrietta Lacks, you know, her, her cervical cancer cells were taken from her and used without her consent, right? And so to this day, Henrietta Lacks, we call these, uh, the cells that are named after her are called HeLa cells. And I talk about this double consciousness that I have where on, you know, W.E.B. Du Bois coined this double consciousness as a psychosocial divide um, to explain two opposing black experiences. And I, I experience it. I call her geneticist. You know, I, I, I. So Janina and geneticist. Mm -hmm. Yes. I experienced this because from the science side, like when I was at Spelman, I heard of HeLa cells. We all knew about HeLa cells. And then once I like started to, you know, once I was, I think my freshman, uh, towards the end of Spelman, I heard about Henrietta Lacks. And I'm like, 
well, how did I not know that he loves, stand from Henrietta Lacks's, the two first two letters of her first and last name? How did I not know that? And I felt kind of, you know, I was sickened, really, because now I don't know how to engage with genetics, right? Because I am a black woman. So I am, you know, a representation, a manifestation of Henrietta Lacks. At the same time, I'm a scientist and understand the value of the genome. So to get to your question, you know, how do we prevent another Henrietta Lacks from happening. We have to understand everything that could happen with our genomes.